Hi, welcome to another edition of Tech 37. My name is Bob Olwig. I'm uh, VP of Business Development here at Worldwide. Uh, for those of you who have joined us in the past, Tech 37 is all about bringing together some industry experts to talk about um, pressing uh, technology issues that are facing our customers. And this week's topic is all about visibility and security visibility in particular. And we brought together some guests from uh, literally around the world. Uh, we have Kevin Kreeble, who's with Expanse. Welcome, Kevin. We've got Dylan DeAnda from Tanium. Welcome, Dylan. Uh, great to have you. And then from Worldwide Technology, we have Chris Conrad and Rudy Kasperzak. How'd I do? Very good. Very good. <laughs> yep, that's a good one. Um, so um, we're going to jump right into it. Uh, but before I begin, I think many of you in the audience may know who Worldwide Technology is. We're a, a systems integrator, a global systems integrator. Uh, been in business since 1990, and um, we really do help customers solve some of their most pressing business problems, and security is definitely one of those top of mind issues. Um, but we don't do it alone. We work with some great partners like Tanium and Expanse. Um, for those of you who don't know, Tanium provides organizations with a single point of visibility to control and secure and manage endpoints at massive scale across enterprises. It's incredible, and we've been a longstanding partner of Tanium, so we appreciate you being here. Um, Expanse uh, helps IT organizations and security teams discover, manage, and secure all of their global internet assets. So expanding beyond the enterprise into the wild, wild west of the uh, global internet. Yeah. So great to have you here. I'm going to go ahead and get started and, and tee this up a little bit. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Chris and Rudy from Worldwide to kind of tee this up and talk about why is visibility so important in the security space and why does it all start with visibility? Yeah, it just seems that's a great question. I mean, it's every customer that we go to, it's, it's just top of mind everywhere we go. It doesn't matter if they're a global service provider, global financial services, enterprise, or public sector. Everybody just seems to struggle with knowing what's on their network. And you coined the phrase, I mean, what, the three questions. What's on my network? What is it doing? And should it be? Mm -hmm. And if you can't answer those three basic questions, I think we got problems. Yep. Yeah, and from a, from a what's on your network perspective, uh, a lot of times when we talk to people about that, they kind of think like uh, just equipment, uh, hardware, stuff like that. When we, when we kind of help people out and we help customers out, for us, what's on our network is really much broader than that. You know, we're talking about people, we're talking about data, we're talking about systems, services, software, um, you know, across the board. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I'm just so excited working with like, you know, Team Expanse, because it really gives us a view into, uh, you know exactly what's on that network and what's it doing. And what, what is it about the network today, Rudy, that's different than it was maybe 10, 15 years ago? Uh, just, you know, over, just overall complexity. And, and, and I don't know if it's so much a difference in the networks. I, I think it's really more uh, a lot of the way companies are actually getting put together, mm -hmm. you know, through like mergers and acquisitions and stuff. That really affects your visibility because you have a lot of different IT, you know, you've got shadow IT going on, you've got uh, networks that you're trying to bring together, and sometimes, you know, there's just a lot of complexity in doing that. So just being able to touch your equipment, to even have the, a, a chance of, of just sort of reaching out and seeing what there is, is just very challenging. Mm -hmm. And I would say that it also has to do with just the internet itself, right, in terms of where our end users exist. Yep. Um, it's not as neat and tidy as it used to be in terms of enterprise networks where you had firewalls and so forth to segment and cordon off um, where the users were accessing the, the corporate systems and so forth. So, oh, yeah, 100% agree. You know, at least, you know, 10 years ago, pretty much everything is set, with, you know, inside of walls. Mm -hmm. You know, now with things like uh, Amazon, stuff like that, not only do you have different IT in your own organization, but you could have shadow IT across the enterprise, across the world. Right. You know, and a big part of that is really understanding where those assets exist in the enterprise, right? Inside your four walls and outside your four, four walls. And, and Dylan, maybe I uh, would turn to you and ask, you know, how do you help with asset discovery and management? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the first, I, th I think you're spot on, Rudy. And I think if you can't identify what's on your network, you have no hope of securing it, much less managing it, and ultimately contributing to the business by providing the efficiency and the capabilities that, that are needed by those business units, those subordinate uh, companies, to be able to do what the business needs to do to serve the customers. So asset management from our perspective is the first thing. We always begin with similar questions. How many computers are on your network? And are they authorized to be there? What applications are installed? And are they up to date and non-vulnerable? Uh, what about your users? Who's using that computer and are they authorized to do that? Uh, and beyond that, what are your vulnerabilities? And then ultimately, 
leading up to the final question, have you been breached? Oftentimes we see customers mm -hmm. starting with the reverse end of have we been breached and looking for that, that you know, solution that says you have been breached. However, you oftentimes are a victim of a breach because you had so many assets scattered across your enterprise that you didn't know about that were undermanaged or completely unmanaged. We had a customer that uh, had a, a well-intended administrator deploy servers into uh, the cloud and they connected them by a virtu uh, virtual private circuit back to their enterprise, mm -hmm. back where the crown jewels were. They didn't secure it, it was merely an experiment and a science experiment that went wrong. And so that was a massive compromise mm -hmm. for their environment. Mm -hmm. So again, if you don't know what you own, mm -hmm. what you have, number one, you're at a security risk, and number two, are you using that equipment to its utmost, to its highest and best potential? What's causing that, do you think, these days in terms of that attack surface being broader than it used to be? I think it's the, the, the digital uh, transformation that a lot of companies are going through today. They're saying we've got to get to the cloud. You know, business units are, are asking for more nimbleness out of, yeah. out of the CIO, and they have to respond. And so it's a balance between can we fulfill the needs of the business mm -hmm. along with walking that fine line of security and operational sanity. And I, I think one of the things, it, it's just so easy to do, yeah. right? Before, you know, 10 years ago, if you wanted to get new hardware on your network, you had to go buy some hardware. Right, you had, somebody had to go out to a store, they had to get in a car, they had to drive it in, they had to walk through the front gate, maybe somebody would say, well, you're bringing that in. But with you know, stuff like cloud, I just need a credit card. Yeah. Right? Um, and it happened so quickly, and too. It happened you so know, quickly. In the old days when there was a delay, maybe it wasn't a good delay by IT in yeah. terms of how long it took to provision servers and so forth, but it did prov provide probably the security team a little bit of breathing room in yep. terms of identifying when that new service was going to be brought up and then thinking about how it was going to be secured. But, it, but certainly, and, and Kevin, I'll ask you this question, you know, the, the surface, uh, attack surface is definitely broadening uh, because of things like public cloud sure. and the, the ease of spinning up new applications and so forth that, that are often shadow IT, that, that clearly the IT group doesn't have visibility to it. And maybe sometimes they do have visibility to it, but they don't understand um, what to do when they know about these instances being spun up in AWS or Azure. So how, how do you uh, think about that in terms of the attack surface and creating visibility there? Yeah, definitely. So from our perspective, you know, your attack surface issue is really an asset management issue, right? The fact is that if you don't understand what and where all of your assets are from an internal perspective with Tanium and obviously from an external uh, point of view with Expanse, then you really can't secure it, right? So, I mean, we've talked about with attack surface reduction in the past how we help customers reduce the time it takes to, to mitigate an exposure uh, or to identify it, but in a lot of times we're introducing the time it takes to, to identify that because if there's an asset that's exposed that you didn't know was part of your network or belonged to you, right, then, then you would have never known in the first place. And you said it, right? I mean, you guys, as a WWT, you're working with large global scaling clients that the larger you get, the more decentralized IT becomes. Mm -hmm. And for our customer base today, uh, you know, really the solution they have in-house today to keep track of all of their public-facing assets is Excel spreadsheets, mm -hmm. right? So we have, for example, a global ISP that we work with who prior to using Expanse, uh, I think they had, you know, all based on all the business units, subsidiaries, had somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 Excel spreadsheets that they were real-time, hopefully, manually updating, right? And once we engaged with them, we actually reclassified around 7% of the network, which isn't that, that large to them, but it was 3.8 million public-facing assets for them that they didn't know were theirs in the first place, right? Wow. And so to them, not that big, but to an attacker, right? And that's the whole point of really what we're looking at it is from the attacker's perspective to say, you know, it's, it doesn't really matter what industry you're in, what vertical, who you are. Attackers don't care. They're looking for opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, Kevin, you're really pointing out a couple different issues, if I heard you correctly. One is just the discovery of those assets, right? Yeah. And and I'm sure it's static. I'm sure once you discover those assets, they don't change for <laughs> yeah. for know, minutes. For yeah. minutes, yeah, exactly, uh, or yeah. maybe even seconds. Yeah. You know, so there's a little bit of an element of you know how real time mm. the uh, data is in terms of the the assets that you have within sure. your network. So that's a problem set that you that you're facing. The next is I heard spreadsheets, and I kind of cringe a little bit when I hear that IT or the security team is running on spreadsheets. Excel is a platform. Uh, yeah, yeah. Excel, it, it is. is a platform. <laughs> uh, it's a very old platform uh, that's good for certain things, but I don't think it's very good for tracking assets as it relates to protecting uh, uh, a, a, an infrastructure environment. So can you guys comment on that in terms yeah. of, one, um, you know, how, how do we help customers, first of all, discover 
those assets? And then what do we do to, to make sure that that information is as accurate as possible? Well, I mean, you know, just working really closely with uh, partners like, you know, Tanium and Expanse, that's really that first step, right? You know, what it, it's, it's always people, processes, and technology. Um, you know, technology is not the, the answer, but it's definitely the enabler. Um, if, if I've got technology that's already getting in my way, the chances of the other two things falling in line are really small. Uh, that's the beauty of Tanium and the beauty of Expanse is it is real time, right? I'm not asking uh, the, the, the system, you know, what's on my network, what did somebody type into my network, you know, to type into my database. Um, I'm actually asking my network what's on my network. So I'm getting real time uh, answers. Uh, and now the question, and here was where WWT comes in, is how do we pull that all together inside of an organization so they're not just doing that every once in a while or putting it into a spreadsheet? How do we integrate that into a real CMDB system? How do we tie that in with their asset management systems, with their compliance systems? Um, so we'll work with our partners and we'll work with our customers to figure out who those key stakeholders are and actually work out a real project program related plan um, to get the most out of the data that they're pulling in from, from our partners so uh, Rudy, services. We're, we're really kind of reducing the manual effort up front in terms of the asset discovery using the tools from Expanse and, and Tanium, right? I mean, that, yep. that's helping us automate something that was manual and error prone. And then even on the updating of the assets and so forth, we're automating that as well. And I, and I would suspect that we're aggregating the information and providing visibility in a, in a more comprehensive view. And for me, that, that's really more the order, right? You know, get technology that allows me to get the information that I need as fast as possible without a human touching it. Because if somebody's typing something in, it's wrong, yeah. right? Once you get past that, uh, then it's trying to figure out what do I want to aggregate that with? So rather than having desperate pieces of data, I have a story, right? Rudy logged onto this machine at this time that was running this service, maybe it shouldn't have been, that talked to this C to C element. And now I can back that thread through and find out exactly what happened. And once I understand what I want to uh, aggregate, try to automate so that I can really nail down my uh, remediation time. So let, let's uh, talk a little bit about <clears throat> how Expanse and Tanium work together and how you complement each other. So who wants to start? So I think, I think we've all touched on it, really. It, there's a couple of key elements here that we're talking about. One is complexity of the environment. Two is time. And, and three is visibility. Yeah. And I think we both have a complementary, uh, all, all three of us here, have a great complementary approach to providing that complete visibility. For, so Expanse provides it from from the network, right? From the outside in. From the outside in, for sure. Yeah, and, and yeah. we conversely provide it from the inside out. Um, you know, I think that's being able to see outside of, of the, uh, the endpoint. Yep. I mean, two pieces, right? So one is obviously from differenti differentiation standpoint, discovery is a big piece for us. So I think if we had those t-shirts that you see at RSA right now, we bro probably both have shirts that say, you know, find your unknown unknowns, mm -hmm. right? If you don't know about it, you can't secure it. Uh, but I think metaphorically speaking, to kind of simplify it, Expanse is showing you the front door. Tanium is showing you where that would lead if they got in through mm -hmm. the front door, mm -hmm. right? So giving you that full picture into the house. Hey, Kevin, give us an example. Like, give us, uh, you know, without naming names, we don't sure. we would never do that. But give us an example of a high-impact uh, capability that you deliver for a client. Yeah, I mean, so <laughs> think about... Uh, for us, if we're looking at not just your attack surface, but who your attack surface is communicating to, right? So uh, we have an organization that we work with, you know, Fortune 100, um, who has policies in-house to make sure that none of their perimeter is talking to specific countries, right? Uh, in this example, we'll use Iran because that's mm -hmm. the reality. And before they engage with us, you know, that's part of the, the discovery questions that we're asking them, saying, well, who do you not wanted to be talking to that you have policies in place to make sure that's not happening. And Iran was the one that came up. Uh, but using us and a lot of the capabilities that we have, we were able to help them understand, actually, you're still communicating to Iran on a daily basis. And we're seeing somewhere in the neighborhood of like 15 to 20 outbound and inbound connections a day. Right. And so that's a part where as you've gotten larger and larger, larger mm -hmm. as an organization, how do you keep track of A, everything that is your perimeter, and then B, if you don't aren't able to track your entire perimeter, you're certainly not able to track what's actually happening from a communication And standpoint. Kevin, when you provide that visibility, which is great, um, I'm assuming that Iran is probably not you know, a place where traffic should be communicating to, and it's probably related to some policy that the organization has. Yeah. What do you do to then remediate something that's you know, happening in the network that shouldn't be happening? Yeah, so I think that's where worldwide technology comes in, right? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're not doing any remediation, right? We're not 
-hmm. We are a security company, but we are not securing anything for you. Mm -hmm. We're providing you highly actionable data in real time, like you're talking about. And worldwide uh, is where that would step in on behalf of the customer and be able to, you know, best practices, mm -hmm. run the playbook with them, do like things of that nature. And, and we're seeing organizations that when we meet with them, they go, fantastic data, but we don't necessarily have the expertise or the talent or the staff to do this. And part of that is because the data that we're providing was just never available before, right? We're, we're so solving a problem for them that they just kind of walked about and were like, it's a problem, we can't do anything about it. And now we're here and solving that problem for them and making them look at it differently. And so Worldwide is on the leading edge for that with us uh, today, and obviously with you guys as well, uh, has been doing a fantastic job. Great. And that complementary approach, I think the Better Together story is, you know, a WWT is operating the environment and providing the guidance and the services and the consultancy. Yeah. Expanse is, is detecting those those uh, nefarious connections out there, and in the, that same scenario, if you were to detect a, a, a blacklisted IP, sure. then that would fire off an alert. And with Tanium, you could ask a simple question like, "Show me all the established network mm -hmm. connections from across my entire enterprise," and get your results back in about 10 seconds. And from that point, when you identify the systems that do, fire off an alert and then take action like quarantine, quarantine yep. or do further investigation and forensic investigation mm -hmm. to respond to that incident. Yeah, yeah. that's. Uh, and I think my challenge would be, I'm sure you'd probably say this to customers all the time, but if you are investing in Tanium or Expanse separately, right, if you're interested in discovering visibility outside of the firewall, why would you not be interested inside yeah. and vice versa, right? And, and that's actually culture. one of the reasons I'm so excited working with these two partners is um, it's, it's, it's so seldom that you find two services that complement each other so well and have like almost no overlap, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, you are outside, you know, the guns, gates, and guards, and you are inside the guns, gates, yeah. and guards. Absolutely. <laughs> but they cover the basics. Yeah. And our customers just struggle with the basics, whether it's visibility and patching. And these two partners, our strategic partners, they cover those areas for us. Mm -hmm. And our customers also just have way too many security tools in general and they're trying to get on the bleeding edge too many times and they just need to get, take a step back and know what's on their network, start with yeah. visibility, and then start with those plans first. And then the real time part of both of these things, uh, one of the things that they really help drive an organization to is what I like to call continuous compliance, yeah. right? It's not something I'm gonna look at once a month, once a year, once a quarter. It's something I can look at every day, every hour. You know, if something's coming out of compliance, something showed up where it doesn't belong. Uh, I know about it almost in real time. And it, I mean, you see this on LinkedIn, right? I'm sure you see it all the time too, where you have security folks that are essentially posting articles about a breach that happened and saying, well, this company ignored the basics. And I've tried to hold back from commenting too often, but the basics don't matter if you don't understand what is what you own, right? From an external yeah, and internal absolutely. perspective. Like you can run the basics all day, but if 40% of your network that belongs to you, you don't even know it exists. Yep. Or it it you know it's the it bottom exists. of that pyramid, right? What's yeah. on my network? If yeah. you don't have that, don't bother building the rest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the number one CIS control. And I think it's, you mentioned a little bit earlier, the complexity piece. And we see that as a huge inhibitor to progress and to just yeah, proper right. IT hygiene. Yeah. And by that I mean, over the last 30, 40 years, we continue to address new problems with single point solutions because we have to, because it's a specific focused tool that achieves an outcome. And what we find today is just on the endpoint alone, you see tens of agents out there. The most I've ever seen was 22 on a, on a single endpoint, mm -hmm. and they're competing for resources. And so what you realize is you're taking about 30% uh, about of that compute power off that device just to manage it, and that means you're diminishing all that, all that power for potential. Yeah. So with that then, our platform allows us to gather and distribute information at great scales and, and great speeds, but we build point solutions on top of that, and that's where our competitors sit. They continue to clutter up the, the data centers, they continue to, to eat away at the support costs, at the complexity, at people's time. We want to provide a single solution, a single infrastructure, a single agent with a unified workflow yeah. that looks from the inside of the device out. And, and the other thing that I really like about um, you know, your two services is, uh, from a Tanium perspective, you don't add much to the complexity by putting Tanium in the environment. You know, it's not like a lot of systems where I need, uh, you know, thousands of servers, you know, as part of my infrastructure to control millions of endpoints. I need three, right? Uh, you know, very simple. And with yours, it's even easier. Yeah. Just need no to know install. the company name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and you hit on earlier, Bob, about real time. Uh, you know, real time is obviously important, but continuous is also really important. Yeah, I mean, there's so many security solutions out there that are interested in giving progress reports, right? This is in third grade. This is not like a, we get a report card every three months. 
if you're not discovering these things and, and getting insights into this on a daily basis and you're working off of data that's two to three weeks old, how secure are you? Right. Right. Yep. And, and, you know, when you talk to organizations where that's the current solution today, it's like the, the simple question is, are you confident in your security posture today? And if so, why? And if the answer is yes, and the if so is because we use these solutions that tell us data every two to three weeks, I mean, that's... Yep. That's the key right there, Kevin, yeah. is, is the, the, the time it takes to gather the information and then take action on it. Because it's all about being able to make a decision. If you're in a leadership position like a CIO, a CISO, a director, you're there to make decisions on behalf yeah. of the company. And thereby, if you can't make a decision on quality data and you don't trust that data, then you're going to be spinning your wheels. And that's why we oftentimes see IT organizations taking days, weeks, months, or sometimes never just to complete a simple vulnerability or a patch scan. And yeah. then we have to get into actually fixing it, mm -hmm. actually remediating those vulnerabilities. And that becomes an entire issue into itself. Yep. And then where we really try to help is, you know, now we've got you know, great services that are giving us great insight into our networks, both internal and external. Um, can the organization even identify when something happened? Uh, and then, you know, how do they how do they work that through a workflow, right? These are things yep. I care about. These are things I don't care about. These are things I know about, but there's some reason it's in that particular state. Um, you know, just walking through that whole operationalization phase, so that you really minimize the 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 time and the workload on the uh, um, on the employees. And that's and where there's a lot of breakdown. That's where the people in the process break down. Yep. They don't have formalized corporate governance to be able to track and measure that. Or they're getting 50,000 alerts yeah. a day, so they just learn to, you know, hit the button to delete. And delete. if they do have the governance in place, they don't have the visibility to enforce the governance, yep. right. Right, exactly. right, to make sure that's happening. And yeah. we've seen so many times, so we've seen so many times where our, our, our customers love the technology, they get it, but they don't have the capabilities internally, and that's where qualified partners like WWT yeah, right. really come in to be able to provide those standard operating procedures, the playbooks, mm -hmm. the personnel, and the expertise that are entirely intimately familiar with our technology, the expertise to deliver on those outcomes that it, they're looking for. And, and also with uh, WWT's, you know, experience with, you know, just all of our other partners. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we've, we've probably partnered with just about everything we're going to run into in an organization. You know, I, I need to integrate with X, Y, or Z. Uh, we've, we've probably done it before. We probably have it already in our ATC. Mm -hmm. You know, we yeah. can show it to you live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it, uh, you know, what has resonated with me in listening to you, one is the scale at which um, we're helping customers, and, and it's a tribute to your technologies. It's amazing, you know, 10-second visibility. And this is on networks that could be millions of endpoints. It's millions incredible. of endpoints, multi-cloud solutions, uh, international, global companies are finding that they're able to go from guessing. I ask a, I'll ask a, an executive, how many computers do you have? How many computers are you responsible for in your enterprise? That's a great question. 250,000. 250,000 exactly? Exactly. <laughs> We often find 20, 30 percent more yeah. in their environment, and that's a massive gap. That's a and you're not gap. talking about the Roku's, the no. <laughs> all the unauthorized devices. All the, unauthorized. And the thing is, like, that's not that's not the CIO's fault, right? Like yep. uh, all of this, you know, when we walk into an organization and say, "Well, you think you own 40,000 public-facing assets? You actually own 70,000." It's not your fault. That's just you've been growing so quickly, right? But you know, you never had the tools in place, and that that's really shame on the SaaS vendors for us not having something come to market quick enough to, to help you scale, mm -hmm. right? So I wanted to make one last point, and that's you know, really about the culture in IT today. And I believe that all of these point solutions have really led us to believe that things won't interoperate, there's always going to be a gap, and there's always going to be divisions between all these tools you have in your data center. And that's led us to the acceptance of 80% is good enough. Mm -hmm. And I just don't believe we should stand for that anymore. We now have technology, we now have services, we now have teams of people who can actually accomplish far more than they could 10 years ago we need to raise the bar. Sure. Yeah, and if you look at it, the, just the attack surface and just the sheer number of devices and end users on our networks, it's at such an enormous scale that if you're missing 10, 20% of those assets, I mean, that's yeah. catastrophic. It only for, takes one. It only takes one. So um, definitely feel for the, the, the security specialists that are within our uh, customers, organizations, mm -hmm. and so forth. So um, we're coming towards the end of uh, our session here, and I wanted to touch on a couple of different areas. First of all, Kevin, I, could you speak to a little bit of the, the scale in which Expanse operates and, and how you guys help your customers? Yeah, definitely. So I Expanse owns, operates, and maintains our own global infrastructure, right? And what we're using that to do is uh, scan, index, and map the entire IPv4 space of the public Internet on a daily basis, right? So when we're delivering 
the you know insights and the details about your entire attack surface and you know your master IP list from a public facing perspective. That's without any installer configuration on the client side. Um, and then the piece we talked about where understanding what communication is leaving your edge and, and coming to your edge and, and who it's talking to. Uh, that's based on partnerships that we have global ISPs that essentially we're aggregating around 70% of internet net flow data at any time uh, to give a pretty good understanding of what's happening at a, at, a, at a really high sampling rate compared to the market. That's great. Uh, and it leads me to my next question around providing visibility to clients supply chains sure. and, and um, how, do, how do you guys help in that, that scenario? Yeah, so this is something that's kind of new for us in the go-to-market and we're exploring this worldwide. Um, you know, from our perspective and, and hopefully from a client's perspective, if your key suppliers are exposed, you are as well, right? And I don't think Expanse is an organization that you're going to use to stack rank your 800 to 1,000 suppliers, but there's, you know, those top 15, 20 key suppliers that you work with that you depend on. Um, and, you know, until now, you say to your key supplier, hey, you know, tell us what your security posture is, and they say it's, it's this, right? And, I, you know, I was in Boston at some event, and I was asking uh, somebody pretty high up at one of the banks, you know, how do you validate that? And they go, we don't need to. We trust our, all of our key suppliers. And I kind of sat there for a second, like, that can't be the answer. <laughs> and then this person started laughing, right? It's like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> or it's a document. Yeah. They said, here's a risk assessment. Yeah, exactly. I'm just kidding. Like, we don't, right? We have, like, something that gives us a rough score on it, but nothing actionable. Nothing that actually tells us, hey, they're actually exposed to this IP address, right? And so that's something that we're looking at with our customers is providing that to them so that they can be able to understand what the actual security posture is, like, validate that. Because the same goes for M&A, which I would almost say is, Pretty, pretty relatively the same use case is if you're acquiring a company, how do you understand what their security posture is prior to making that acquisition? Mm -hmm. So being able to validate things that are not just your organization, but also organizations you interact with or acquiring, um, yeah. No, that makes sense, that makes sense, especially as the IT supply chains are so integrated and we really rely on those IT chain, or supply chains to uh, run our business. So mm -hmm. I can see how that could be a value. So we're going to move into a bit of a lightning round here. We've talked a lot about uh, visibility and security and how important that is. Um, you know, there's a few other uh, topics that are related that are extraordinarily important to our customers. One of them is around um, patch management. And I know Tanium has been a leader in this space for quite a while, and we've got a lot of experience here at Worldwide. Do you want to talk a little bit about what that challenge is and kind of the current state of patch management? Well, it all begins with visibility, as we've been talking about here. You have to understand what you own, then you have to evaluate it for what is versus what should be. And from that point, then you can correct those, those, um, those vulnerabilities. Our approach to that is with a single agent, we deploy that agent into an environment, and from there, we can see all of the other devices that are on the network. We can deploy our client onto those networks, or those, uh, those endpoints, and from there, we can begin to evaluate them for configuration compliance against CIS benchmarks, vulnerabilities, and configurations, and, and the corporate standards. From that point, then, we can begin to scan for patching and then apply those patches or remediate those vulnerabilities. So not only can we find it, but more importantly, we can fix it. Mm -hmm. And then, as as Rudy talked about, have that continuous compliance approach where you're continuously evaluating. Typically, it would take days, weeks, even months, as I said before, to scan an environment just for patches or just for vulnerabilities or just for compliance. And now you're looking at five to 10 different tools that you have to deploy, your team has to get capable on, and you've got to have a long tail of support, hardware, and it's cluttering up your data center. Single agents, single infrastructure, all the way across the board, IT operations, security, risk, and compliance. With that then, patching is a small component of that, but an incredibly important component, not just at the operating system level, but think about those third-party applications that are out there. Java, Flash, all of those old vulnerable versions that are really hard to manage. That's our approach. Yeah, and I, I, look at, I think about that in context to, Rudy, how we help our customers with that capability, that patch management capability. We've uh, worked with many customers in terms of almost helping them with almost patch as a service, mm -hmm. you know, where we're able to um, implement it in, in a way that's part of their overall security hygiene that they need to be doing. Patch management is just one part of a, a security program that our yeah. customers need to have. How, any examples of where we've Oh yeah, that? I mean, uh, like right now, especially like working with Tanium, we're, we're, we're working with organizations to uh, help them, like, you know, just do really short sort of uh, assessments. Just where are you? Um, and, and that's always eye-opening. Uh, follow that up with uh, sort of a true up, right? How do we get you to at least a spot where, you know, you're in that, you know, 90, 80, 90 percent and you've got a process now. 
you know, so many customers that we work with, uh, you know, they, they really don't have a process. Or they'll have a process with Windows and they'll have nothing with Linux, right? You know, and, and, and it's really trying to bring, you know, um, uh, you know, more of an enterprise-wide view of those particular activities inside of an organization. Uh, and we and really don't start help them operationalize from, We don't it. start from zero, right, mm -hmm. Rudy, when we, when we engage with uh, our clients. I know that we bring to the uh, table, you know, reference architectures yep. and security architectures that, that involve valued partners, technologies, and so forth. But let's talk a little bit about it, and I think, Chris, you mentioned it earlier. There's this people side mm -hmm. of, of, the, uh, of the equation sure. here that we at Worldwide really help out on. And can you talk a little bit about, one, what's the challenge that our customers are facing as it relates to human resources and then how does Worldwide help? Yeah, great question, Bob. I mean, you look at the shortage of skilled resources that are out there in general. I mean, I think if you look at the stats, I think we're three million jobs short when it comes to security. And I think it's a half a million here in the US. So I, I have not yet m met an organization that's overstaffed when it comes to cybersecurity. Yeah. So everybody is, is, is starving for security resources. And so when it comes to, to patching, it's the same thing. It's that they don't have the time, they don't have the resources, they don't have the expertise. And then there's a breakdown in communication in a lot of places where you've got the IT team not talking to the networking team or the application team and they need somebody like WWT to come in and pull it all together mm -hmm. to help them with that process. All right, and, and just, you know, uh, over and above even patching, you know, when we talk about, you know, services like, uh, like Tanium and Expanse, they're so broad, right? And that's one of the things that we really see when we go into an organization uh, is, is they really have, to, we really have to help them break down those stove pipes, you know, because the compliance people now have to deal with the security people, have to deal with the IT people, have to deal with the, uh, the software deployment folks, because it touches everything. Yeah. And where we really try to help is, uh, in, or, in order for you to get the most value, you really need a deliberate program, right? You need to know, you know, this is what we're going to be working on today, this is what we're going to be working on this week. Very outcome-oriented, outcome-focused, and, and that's what we really try to bring to, uh, to a customer with our partners, to make sure that they get the return on investment as fast as possible, they do it safely, uh, you know, inside their organizations, because with great, with great uh, capability comes great responsibility. Um, and, uh, and, and like I said, really try to get them where they need to be so they're more towards that continuous compliance. So I want to ask each one of you as we wrap up here, um, you know, we've got a number of viewers uh, uh, watching uh, today. Um, I'm putting myself in their shoes, and, and I, by the way, thank you. This has been a great uh, conversation today. But I put myself in their shoes, and I wonder, well, what do I do next? and I think about how each one of our organizations can help them, um, what should they be thinking about and how can we help? Chris, I'll start with you. Yeah, I think the first thing I think an organization needs to do is, is take a step back and, and do, a, do an assessment of their current state environment mm -hmm. and understand what levels of risk they're currently operating at, not only from a technological standpoint, but also from a programmatic standpoint and really get that baseline before they start tackling broader problems. They need to know what level of risk they're operating at. Yeah, and, and for me, it's, it's really kind of like start with the basics. A lot of times when we talk to customers, they want to talk about AI and machine learning and you know all this cool stuff, and they don't know what's on their network, right. right? It's really, you, you got to start with the basics. Do I understand my environment? So Kevin, as we, uh, as we wrap up our session today, tell us a little bit about um, you know, what our customers should be thinking as it relates to cloud or multi-cloud. Yeah, so I mean, from our perspective, the cloud is complex. I would think that most Fortune 500s, their, their cloud is complex as well. Uh, you know, and our customer data today that we're looking at shows us that on average, our customers are in at least 55 different providers, right? In terms of their assets are hosted by 55 providers that are not them, which shows that they obviously don't have cloud governance policies in place or they don't have the visibility to do anything about it. And so, you know, with Expanse having the ability to understand what all of your cloud assets are across all providers, regardless of whether they're in your main accounts or rogue stuff that got spun up by a marketing team or developer. Um, having a full grasp on that, I think will really help you know, with you guys with the, the migration story of eliminating that paranoia of saying, well, if we move there, we're losing visibility and discovery, not with us, mm -hmm. right? From day one, be able to know everything that you own and when stuff gets spun up that you know, the CISO didn't know about, now he does in real time. Yeah, I think in terms of just competence, I think that's what you're providing, right? In yeah. terms of competence of knowing, 
the assets that you have, whether it's on-prem or up in a, a public cloud environment. And that's incredible, but I guess uh, the number of, of uh, public cloud providers or SaaS providers that, that customers are, and clients are using this day, uh, today, I mean, that's, that's you know, expanding the attack surface in, a, in an extraordinarily uh, big way. And it just, again, it seems overwhelming to our, our customers. But I think as, as partners and with our services capability, I think Worldwide can help address that. So Dylan, I'm going to leave the last uh, word to you in terms of uh, what should our viewers be thinking about? You know, I, I often ask these questions and to really boil it down, go back to my original points, if you don't know what's on your network, you really are going to have a struggle to try to, to manage it, much less secure it. Uh, and I think that if you don't know uh, the number of devices that you have, where they are, who's using them, and the vulnerabilities associated with those, mm -hmm. then I think it's going to continue to be a struggle for, for your organization. And I would highly encourage you to be able to answer those questions with a conversation with WWT, Expanse, and Tanium. Very good. Well, with that, I want to say thank you to our guests. It's been an awesome uh, 30 minutes or so. Really appreciate all of your insights. Uh, for more information about our Tech 37s, you can visit our show notes that we have uh, on the episode. And really appreciate you all uh, checking in with us today and look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.